have to start with, I, uh, I'm very, this is completely off tangent, I just have to start, and it's a question at you. What is it like for you rolling into a bar now? Do you find people like getting very mad at you for no reason, or are oh, people I like? That question. I mean, because it you played, you know, the popularity of that show. I'm sure has made it very difficult in real life. Um, I don't know. I think people sort of really enjoy hating him, so I don't get people angry with me or anything. People also definitely bow to you in public at the bar. People get used. People see people walk down and the street pledge and their get allegiance scared. to. Yeah. <laughs> What is their allegiance to, Ram <laughs> to Ramsey Bolton? I've seen it. Yeah, it's kind of weird. <laughs> I'll have a beer whilst someone is over here like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty funny. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, jumping into why I get to talk to you guys today. Uh, first of all, congratulations. Um, Jeff has been trying to make this movie since 2013. Mm -hmm. What... What was it like with him on set? Because was he like a kid in a candy store? He's been trying so hard to make this movie. Well, I, I, rem I remember thinking, Jeff Tremaine, Jackass, this is gonna, like Motley Crue, the dirt, this is gonna be the most in insane, wild set ever. You know, pranks everywhere, but he was so focused because he's been trying to get it made for, for so long and he really cares about this genre yeah. of music and this, this era in time and he grew up, you know, it's his time and he loved it, so he was so focused. But also, he was having the best time ever. He had yeah. like '80s rock blasting the whole time. I mean, he also pulled pranks every day and gave our DP a birthday cake. Uh, but he every gave a, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There was a. It was our director of photography's birthday every, every day. Every single day. It was a <laughs> relentless <laughs> joke that just he hated it over and over again. Yeah. Uh, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, for all three of you, uh, this is a unique situation where the people you are portraying uh, is what really happened. They're all still alive. They can all talk about what really happened. It makes it for a very unique preparation process because mm. everything's available to you. So talk a little bit about what some of the first things you did to get ready to play these roles. Um, I think, well, it was the guitar, getting the guitar right um, for me. Uh, I already played, but it's a very different style. And I think for me, it was the physicality of, of Mick to, uh, you know, he describes his, uh, the ankle losing spondylitis very well in the book. So it was kind of trying to play that, but then not overdoing it and it, and it just being a, a parody of it. Um, because it's obviously, you know, it's very difficult. But yeah, that was kind of what I did. What yeah, about you guys? And, and, <laughs> you, and he's, you're mate, you were mates with Tommy Lee already. And yeah, so I'd go and just plot the script on his desk at the house. And I, I'm fortunate enough to like live here, right? So I'm 20 minutes from Tommy. So I, uh, uh, yeah, I would do things like, you know, set it down and be like, come on, what's this? And he would be like, yeah, man. And then I'd be like, well, how would you say it? And he'd say it just like it just like I thought, and I mean, it was pretty easy, man. Tommy was always kind of just stoked on. But even when you read The Dirt, you can hear Tommy, you can, you, just because he's got such a distinctive way of talking that you can almost like hear him reading it. Right, like, he has right, such a great, right. you got that down. Uh, and for, for me, Nicky, I, like, I feel like Nicky is such a different person now than he was then. You know, he had such a, he had such a hard time with drugs and with heroin and many other things. And so he really is a different person now. So when I met, when to me, firstly, I was intimidated to go there and then he was so warm. He was so zen and warm and inviting and kind and so open and he would do everything from like text me guitar riffs to stuff like that. But then I remember Jeff Tremaine saying to me, remember he's a different person now and you've got to find what he was then. So that, so it was kind of the balance of who he is now because they're alive and that they've, they've graduated as people to different people. You have to kind of go back and find who they were. But luckily there's a lot of MTV interviews and a whole lot of stuff. You've got a lot of manner, mannerisms you can pick up from YouTube and stuff like that. So it was a whole blend of different things. I've spoken to a lot of actors, and when they're getting ready, when they're playing a real person, when they're, they, they latch on to a piece of video, or an interview, or something, and they'll constantly go back to that, like right before they're about to go on set, to mm -hmm. just remind them, or put them in the headspace. Mm -hmm. um, did, for the three of you, did you have something like that? Yeah, we had a yeah, yeah. like that one common one that we loved was the VH1 Uncut. Yeah, right? there, there was a, and also I remember with the dialect coach, she cut together like a whole string of Nikki's interviews from different periods. And sometimes, like, you did the same thing with Tommy, and did you do it with me? I can't remember. Yeah, but there's not that much footage. Yeah, he doesn't really speak that much. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, and you just listen to it and repeat, and it just kind of kickstarts you yeah. into that place. Just but trying like, to find something that they do vocally or whatever that, that yeah. you can latch on to. I mean, yeah. And the laugh is always a good thing, I find. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, uh, I'm always I'm always obsessed about deleted scenes and what didn't make the final cut. Yeah. Uh, do you remember anything that didn't make the finished film? I, I, I almost wish Jeff would put together a blooper 
real because there were so many funny just oh, yeah. burst out laughing scenes or scenes or you know and we spent a few days just doing random stuff yeah some of it's yeah. in the sort of montage bits but there was loads of other there's probably stuff definitely some bloopers out, in, out there somewhere which you could get hold of was the, <laughs> you know there was a scene in the 24-hour compilation where they put this camera on me and they were essentially like all right man like go go crazy and break everything in the hotel room and I was breaking stuff and I was breaking stuff and then I got this lamp and it was kind of like those moments where like no one was yelling cut and it was just like silent and I was like panicking and you know I'm just looking around and I grab this lamp and I'm like ah and I start cracking and the shade ends up falling off and then I'm like whatever and I cracked it again and you know it wasn't open. a prop lamp and it was like <laughs> actual light and it cracked my head open it didn't make the cut man did you have blood flowing you you what in that scene where I get Punched by Doc. That was about 30 seconds in the same scene after I had just cracked the lamp. But I think when I cracked the lamp, I blew the light. That was the light uh, for the room. All right. So it didn't make it because I you can stop and start I going. ruined the light. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm also curious. Uh, you guys, the costumes are great. They look obviously they're they're right from the era. Mm -hmm. Did you ever leave set with the costumes and just take it for a spin? Well, I just try. I try to steal my. At the end of the shoot, I try to steal my girls, girls, girls pants. They're like uh, the one he wore on that tour. They're like leather and they have denim. They're like sick and like got red lacing. And I had got a call from oh, a week yeah. later. She said, "Can you send the, the pants back? Because they keep everything in a in a warehouse until they know they don't need to do reshoots. So I'm still waiting for them to be sent back because they're sick. I want those." Mm. Mick made me a replica of, uh, of "Touch Me, I'll Kill You" and sent it to me, which was really cool. T-shirt which he used to wear a lot. And I got into the film a couple of times, but I took that home, obviously, because it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, my assortment of Speedos didn't make it. Didn't I've got all those. You, go, you yeah, took those? Yeah, okay. yeah. Cool. I took that. <laughs> um, I already got to stop. I'm just going to say congratulations for real, Thanks. and uh, I hope it's a huge hit for you guys. Thank, Thank you so much. You know what I mean? Nice to see you.